Hey guys, Scott here. Complete deja vu. Again, I just woke up just randomly because I had to like pee or something after like two hours. And I was sitting there in a stupor peeing and looking on my phone as dumbasses tend to do. Um, I noticed this tweet by Behavior in which they went over some changes they're making from the PTB to live with the next update. And a lot of the changes I think are pretty interesting. I briefly skimmed stuff. Um, but I want to go through it with you guys in full because I think a lot of it was actually really good. I think actually almost all of it was really good. Um, but let's go over the absolute uh, basics first. Uh, so first off, they uh, did something that we've been requesting for a very, very long time. We've been saying you should uncap the categories of blood points. So if you run the killer for 45 minutes and, you know, you have eight bajillion fullness blood points, you still have the max 32k, um, but you can get all of your blood points in that category. Uh, because, you know, if you do all five gens, you deserve the blood points of all five gens. There's no reason for it to be capped anymore since it's not based on blood points, what your rank is going to actually be. So they didn't do that, but they're taking a step towards that, which makes it so that you can have up to 10,000 points in each category rather than 8,000, which is pretty nice because it doesn't exactly do the thing I was kind of asking for, but it has the side effect of something I didn't ask for, which is just making it so you can earn more blood points per match in total. I, I thought it would still cap at 32, but they're actually making it so you can gain 40,000 blood points per game now. Um, now there is no barbecue in Chile anymore. There's no Reginals forever. So you're not really going to be able to get like double that each time as you normally would. So overall, you're still basically getting less than you were able to before, but on, you know, things like anniversary events where everyone's doing blood point offerings and things like that, it'll actually be really nice and you won't be reliant on barbecue and chili for that. So I think that's really good. Just an objectively good change. I can't see a single downside of this whatsoever. Um, so props, I think that's pretty nice. All right, buddy has finally stopped glowing in his ethereal light. Um, so now they also changed the 50,000 blood points to prestige. They lowered that down to 20,000 which again, just objectively a good change. I don't know why it was that much to begin with. 20,000 is still a decent amount. I don't think it should really cost anything like more than normal, but I mean, that's not bad. That's like four nodes, so whatever. Um, so that's just a really good change. They're also finally raising the blood point cap from 1 million to 2 million, which is again, a change we've been asking for for a very, very long time. Um, there's not really any reason to have a blood point cap. I, I don't know why there is one to begin with. Nobody knows why there is one. It's not to prevent hackers or anything like that because they can already give themselves an infinite blood points. It doesn't really matter. Um, I guess they might be worried about instantly getting all of the perks and add-ons in a new killer, but I don't really see that being a problem anyway because at this point, you can kind of get there pretty quickly by stocking up um, saved you know, coupon codes and the shrine and um, the rifts and the tomes and all that stuff. And then you can have your dailies and stuff like that. You can still stack a bunch of blood points. So you can still kind of do that. But um, yeah, great change. 2 million blood points. Uh, very, very nice. We've also changed the, uh, the catch up mechanic, which basically is going to put people at a higher prestige normal. Um, I don't really care about that. That's, that's cool. Uh, again, nothing in this is bad. This is all just objectively good stuff, in my opinion. So um, very nice to see that. I was very surprised to see these drastic changes we've been asking for not quite to the level that we we're wanting but i mean they're still excellent and on the right path so i think um all those changes are uh really great so the first thing that they're addressing is the endurance so uh, one of the things um that i've noticed about this is they really have kind of listened to feedback very well way more than they usually do which is really nice to see um, so the endurance effect has been a hot topic for discussion since the PTB went live. Historically, the status effect has been used very sparingly, but with the advent of new ways to get the effect, some of you made it your personal mission to chain together as many endurance effects as you could. So that means they're very clearly aware of all the clips of people taking five hits in a row. And uh, again, my hot take on this is that even the existing endurance meta on the PTB that we've seen is not actually going to be a problem. I mean, it's definitely not a problem anymore since they changed it, but it wouldn't have been a problem to begin with. Because if people were spending that much time setting up Metal of Man and everyone's body blocking, the amount of time that they'd be working on gens would go down drastically. And if you had perks like Mad Grid or Starstruck Agitation or Save the Best for Last, all the stuff, um, it would start to actually benefit you even more. So I was not scared about the Endurance meta whatsoever. 
Um, I think it was going to be completely fine other than a couple of games of Outrage until you realize you're still winning these games. It just feels like different because they're all up in your face and stuff like that. So I was never worried about that, but they seem to have addressed issues anyway, which again is very nice to see. Uh, they've made it so you cannot get an Endurance hit when you're in Deep Wounds. So every single Endurance hit in the game applies Deep Wounds, I believe, except Medal of Man. Medal of Man's the only one where you just straight up ignore the hit entirely. Um, so all the combinations with off the record and stuff like that, they are now not going to stack once you've got somebody in deep wounds a single time. So if you hit him with bar of time or something like that, and they're in deep wounds, next hit, they'll go down off the record. Next hit, they'll go down, um, and so on and so forth. Um, this also means that if someone is, you know, like in, uh, Legion frenzy or, you know, death slinger puts him in the mending as well, it's going to be the same effect. So you still can't have endurance with those things as well. Now, I'm curious if that means that Metal of Man won't work as well, because Metal of Man does not put you into Endurance, but you can't be uh, in uh, Borrowed Time, or uh, it doesn't put you in Borrowed Time. So I'm, I'm curious if you're already mending from something and you have Metal of Man active, are you not going to ignore a hit now? I'm not sure how that's going to work, but we'll see. Either way, um, just because I didn't have a problem with it doesn't mean that people weren't um, freaking out about it. It shows that they're listening to the community. And they did not want people taking that many potential hits in a row despite the cost of doing it. And so that's a great way to make sure that that's no longer the case. Uh, now for the actual perk changes themselves. Uh, from what I've read about Spine Chill, basically um, they're making it so there's a visual terror radius indicator on the perk itself. This is basically just the perk for people that are hard of hearing. Um, doesn't really affect me or anything like that. So from an objective meta standpoint, Spine Chill is not going to be good at all. But for hard of hearing people, it's going to be extremely useful. So that's really nice. A good quality of life for them and we can't just exclude them uh, but again just talking from a an objective standpoint the perk is basically being made pretty useless so spine chill kind of dead uh dead hard super dead actually uh I, I was still singing its praises i saw it dead hard for the most part except getting to windows now was going to be pretty much just as good as it used to be um because the distance you covered is still basically the same because you're just invincible for double the time um however they just have now reduced the Dead Hard's duration back down to its original duration while removing the forward momentum. So um, it'll still be useful against killers like Huntress and Trickster and things like that. Uh, but for the most part, yeah, that's... I, I, I was thinking I was still going to use Dead Hard, but eh, I'm not so sure anymore. I, I can't believe I'm saying the sentence. They might have over-nerfed Dead Hard, <laughs> but uh, we'll see. It's been the most prevalent exhaustion, or exhaustion perk in the game for over five years so i at this point fuck it i don't really care anymore <laughs> let, let some other exhaustion perk take the uh crown for now it'll probably be sprint burst or something like that but uh man that, that that's a pretty pretty drastic nerf um off the record now is disabled at end game change we everyone requested because there was a glaring flaw in which it basically just had the old decisive strike problem um, so that's great. That was my only problem with off the record. And since you can't stack it with endurance anymore, it's still going to be very strong. It's still last 80 something seconds, which is insane, but it's not going to be a free out at the end anymore. And you can't stack it to gain, you know, take a billion hits. So that's great. I think off the record is no longer an issue. Uh, overcharge is being made, frankly, a lot worse. They're having the benefit of it to the point that I almost don't even understand why you would use this over Call of Brian. Because Call of Prime will get that same amount of percent reduction, but instantly. However, Overcharge does have that initial burst and also the notification if they miss the skill check. Which, as someone that's pretty good at air hitting skill checks, if you're not prepared for, um, it's still hard to hit. Like it, it catches me off guard more often than not. So, it still has its own niche, and especially if you're a killer like Doctor or something like that, um, it'll be even more useful. But, eh, I hate geeking generators. I wasn't planning on using overcharge anyway because of how much I just hate kicking gens. So I don't think um, I care that much about that. But I think probably a little over nerfed. I think overcharge should have stayed at 400% because it, it takes a while to get to that 400%, which means you need to kick a gen and it needs to sit there for, you know, 30 seconds, a minute until it's finally up until that point. Um, so yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I think that's kind of an over nerf. And uh, I think people will still use it. It's just not as good anymore. And I'm not really sure uh, if it's going to be worth it. Now, botany knowledge, kind of a weird. This is just thematically a very weird change 
but gameplay balance wise it's actually kind of perfect so i'm kind of conflicted how i feel about this so now botany knowledge no longer has the medkit efficiency bonus and it had nothing on the ptb and now it has a penalty so it went from a 33 percent bonus to nothing to a 20 percent penalty so we went basically like a 50 percent reduction in uh medkit efficiency so you can still heal extremely fast now but mathematically this actually works out to kind of cucking you out of an additional heal that you would have easily been able to get with the proper add-ons so now it's going to be a lot harder to actually get two heals out of this so a 20 percent efficiency penalty means you will now basically need on a green med kit you'll need like 24 additional charges rather than 16 so you'll need basically like the gel dressings and the bandage and then you'll be able to get two heals still insanely fast about the current speed right now but you're going to need to use more add-ons to get multiple heals. Um, so, again, thematically, this makes no sense that botany knowledge makes you less efficient at healing. It makes no sense. But gameplay-wise and balance-wise, it actually makes perfect sense. So I actually kind of like this idea. As someone that abused the shit out of green make kits and how insanely strong they were with botany knowledge, I'm glad that's actually... I'm glad that's being nerfed. And you'll still get the full benefits if you're just doing regular heals and stuff like that. So... Again, thematically very weird, but mechanically actually pretty nice. I like that. Uh, Distortion um, now has an audio cue and a token is used. That's just a nice thing to make you realize when your aura is being tracked. I like that a lot. That'll also give you a lot of information about certain perks. Distortion is going to be actually a surprisingly good perk. So I am uh, looking forward to that a lot. Um, Iron Will is now... I, I don't think they're changing Iron Will specifically, but they're just making it so all survivors are going to have a more uniform uh, uniform grunts of pain because as we all know ace like has the perk for free and other people like you know um jane are 10 times louder so it seems like they're going to try to equalize those sounds doesn't seem like we're getting it now but it's good that they're aware of that difference because it's pretty pretty glaring flaw there um inner focus now uh, allows you to see the scratch marks of other survivors within 32 meters and apparently they're removing the range requirement entirely so i think that is um that's kind of decent. I'm still not sure if people are ever going to actually use it, but it's nice that they're giving it some attention, I guess. Um, other than that, there's not too much else to talk about. There's a couple of little, like, charms and stuff that I just don't really care about. They removed the uh, disgusting green jizz on the portrait, wherever the hell it was, for the uh, prestige in the, in the PTV. So that's nice. Um, then they've changed up some of these icons as well. But overall... Uh, I thought from what I skimmed through, this patch was so good that I actually got out of bed to uh, comment on it. So I'm going back to sleep now, but overall, very few things wrong in this patch. Um, I'm sure some people will be upset about the death of Deadhard. Um, Overcharge, I think, was kind of over-nerfed. Hey, hey. Uh, but other than that, good stuff. Good stuff, Bavier.